there are many people who are doing wonderful work to protect nature. Most of them do it in the individual capacity at micro level. Nevertheless, their work is very significant. Echo Wheel brings to you such stories. Hello Sahira, we're really happy to have you here and we're really excited to know how has this journey of yours started? Thank you Srinidhi. This journey, journey started in 2017. In the gated community I stay where there are independent houses with lots of trees, which is rich in green wealth. Um, there were a lot of complaints from residents on cutting down trees because of different reasons. So I started with a green club for children to educate them and make them aware of the importance of this green wealth. So what was the nature of complaints you were receiving? Oh, nature of complaints, complaints were like everything against trees, you know, leaf drop, bats, clean, unclean, you know, droppings of bat, everything was becoming a nuisance to people. So there was pressure on cutting down trees. So that was like, you know, kind of putting an end to the green belt. So you told us you began a children's club. Why did you begin a children's club? Good question. Uh, because all the complaints that were coming were all from the parents, the adults, right? And adults, it is not easy to teach them or change them or bring awareness in them. So I realized that it is the youngsters who are going to be the future torchbearers who need to become responsible adults. That's the reason why I targeted children and youngsters. Uh, after a few years, I came across a WhatsApp message in which a boy who throws starfishes is stopped by a man saying that there's so many starfish, how will you save them? He takes a starfish, he throws it in the water and he says, I've made a difference to this one, if not others. But that line actually triggered me. And that's how I started my initiative, which is active now. So could you please share us something about your present initiatives? Yeah, my initiative is called Garden Yard. Okay, this started about two years back. Uh, I started during COVID and I had about 35 plus webinars for children and mothers, for everybody, uh, on various areas of gardening and sustainability. Plus, I have been having stalls to spread awareness, especially children-related circles and all that. So I've been promoting sustainable living and also focusing on gardening as not as uh, something to decorate or you know, uh, improve the ambience of the house, but to create an ecosystem within your house. Did this initiative of yours help you dissolve the resistance you got from parents? Yes, to a great extent because uh, to connect to children, I realized that I have to connect to mothers, parents especially mothers. And uh, what better way to connect to mothers than to talk about gardening. So that's how it became Garden Yard. Okay, so I have a WhatsApp group of around 200. Most of them are women. Mm -hmm. And there are children as well. So they share a lot of their problems in their houses. Garden issues, queries. And I handle all those queries. I am, there are a couple of volunteers, youngsters who also handle. Uh, that's how I've been able to. So now we have an active group of adults in our group. Mostly mothers. It's good to know that you've started a WhatsApp group for gardening and dissolved a lot of resistance from the parents. So what else is a part of this initiative? Is it just gardening? Gardening was not the actual purpose of starting this group. It was mainly sustainability, sustainable living. And the focus audience that I had selected was children. Now to connect to children, I had to connect to parents, especially mothers. And to connect to mothers, I have to start with something which is, you know, mm. something that can interest them. So it started off with that. But my stalls and all have been more about sustainable living. So in the stalls, I, I display all the products that I've collected, which are eco-friendly, so that we can change our practices in our houses. There are so many, almost everything can be eco-friendly at home. Mm. Right? So when you start living that and it becomes a culture in your house, then you're looking at a macro level. Even gardening is more to create an ecosystem. There are butterflies, there are honeybees, there are insects which are beneficial. That's the macro level vision. When you say stalls, what are these actually about? Okay, uh, these stalls are about all eco-friendly products, sustainable products. Uh, I have 
all kinds of eco-friendly products, and most of them that are available in the market. I spent a lot of time in collecting all of them so that each of us can replace some of our habits which are not eco-friendly into eco-friendly habits. So that's how slowly I can bring about sustainable practice in the houses. So are these just for a display or do you actually sell stuff? I've had both kind of stalls. Mm -hmm. I've had stalls which were exclusively for awareness purpose and there were stalls which were awareness plus sale because mm -hmm. many of them ask, mm -hmm. are you going to sell this, are you going to sell this. So in that I have uh, all products, I also have a lot of plants along with this. So just like any other eco-friendly. It's good to know that people are actually interested yes, in yes. sustainable products. Yes, people are taking interest. Yeah. So yes. how do you Even children, in fact, I have, from my experience of the stalls, I have seen children by default are connected to nature. Mm -hmm. Mud, uh, you know, wood, yeah. these kind of things, they are very, very excited, right? And they ask a lot of interesting questions. Many times they are stopped by the parents, but by default they are connected to nature. So, how do you manage your finances with the stalls? Well, uh, finances in the sense, so far all the stalls that I've had were free stalls. They oh. invited me to have a stall, mm -hmm. so I didn't have to pay for the stall. Mm -hmm. And uh, buying of the products and all, self-sponsored. Mm -hmm. Because my purpose was to use them to bring about a change. So mm -hmm. I never looked at it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, where usually are these stalls put up? I've had in gated community, my own gated community was the first stall, then I've had in a corporate, mm -hmm. I've had in some children's circle, they invited mm -hmm. me along with children's stall, uh, women empowerment, uh, mm -hmm. you know, those related stalls. Okay. There haven't been too many, but yeah, I have it. In, I had them in different type of Like you said, anything places. to bring a change. Yes, yeah. anything to bring a change. Yeah. About the gardening group, oh, what is the name of your group? And do you have people that keep sending good morning texts? You mean the WhatsApp group? Yes. Okay. WhatsApp group is the same name as my initiative. It's called Garden Yard. Okay. And I have about 200 members. And uh, good morning messages. I have not had too much of problem because I have a strict set of rules for them. So once in a way if somebody you know posts, mm -hmm. sometimes it happens by mistake. But if it's intentional, I drop in a very polite reminder. And they have been disciplined members so far. Uh, if I have an unruly one, I'm going to remove them. Are you feeling a little bit humid? Yeah, it's kind of suffocating. have been here for a long time. Well, here at Bubble NGO, we have a solution for this. Here you go. Hey, wow. Eco-friendly fan. Yeah. Amazing. Say no to single-use plastics. That's amazing. Yeah. This is nostalgic. Huh? It reminds me of my childhood. <laughs> nice. So we've associated the CNO to single-use plastic very firmly in our organization at least. Great. Apart from stalls under sustainability, what else are you doing? Srinidhi, have you seen the movie Padma? Oh yeah. Action? Yeah. So what is the message in the movie? It's about a man trying to improve sustainable menstruation. Very yeah. true. Yes. So under sustainability, the latest initiative that I have been is, is the drive that I have been having since six months uh, to transform the menstrual habits of women in the sense to break the traditional methods and move into sustainable menstruation because there is a lot of landfills that happens due to plastic bags. So every month I have a webinar, it's fixed every month. So we've had eight webinars so far on uh, so we talk a lot about the sustainable options under you know there's a big myth in our society it's very difficult to break that so that is why it's a continuous affair that's that's really great i would maybe like to join that yeah, yeah you something. must next webinar yes. i'm going to share the link for sure, for <laughs> sure. Uh, what alternative options are you promoting through these webinars okay uh, the alternates for the current use that is plastic pads that I have been promoting is one is the reusable cloth pads, you know, which we all use to use yeah. for. The other is the menstrual cup, mm -hmm. which is hundred percent biodegradable, compostable, mm. and very safe. And above all this, it's very very cheap. In the sense, the life of a cup is ten years, mm -hmm. and it costs anything between three hundred to 
800 rupees. Okay. So, and this is not known to most of us. Yeah. Some of the doctors also, gynecologists also don't know about it. So, mm -hmm. by through these sessions, we are giving them alternate options. Mm -hmm. That's so that they are know. not only economical for uh, the women, plus they are eco friendly. Yeah. Okay. And uh, how exactly is the response from women around whoever is attending? Uh, response is slow because down south here compared to Bangalore and other cities, you know, the barrier is bigger. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. There's a lot of uh, yeah. myth behind the using them. Mm. So, but however, we've had a good, amount, good number of ladies joining this program and they come up with a lot of questions. So what other market alternatives are you promoting through these webinars? Okay, uh, there are various options. Uh, mainly I'm focusing at two. One is the reusable cloth pads, mm -hmm. washed and used. The other that I'm promoting most strongly, mainly in the married women, is the menstrual cup, which is made of 100% silica, medical grade mm -hmm. silica, which is 100% biodegradable because the plastic pads are a big danger. Danger to us and danger to environment because it takes almost around 300 to even six, seven, 800 years to decompose in the soil. So just imagine each of us how much we contribute mm -hmm. towards the damage we cause. So, and it's also very economical because one cup can cost between 300 to 800 rupees and the life is like 10 years, it's reused, used till 10 years, easy to carry, economical yeah. and very easy on the planet. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm promoting these two. Really. That's really good to know. Maybe I'll change my ways as well. Yeah, you must. I'll yeah. invite you for the next webinar. Yes, yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And how has the response from all the women audience been? It's not been very great. Initially we had, uh, but you know how it is. Yeah, right? There's a big myth in the society yes. on switching from these practices. Mm -hmm. However, we've still had responses and they ask a lot of questions, mm -hmm. which are the reasons to their, uh, those inhibitions. Mm -hmm. uh, these webinars have really helped many of them to switch. So even my own group members, quite a few members have switched into sustainable menstruation. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I'm doing this drive. Every month, compulsory one webinar I have. So we've had like eight webinars mm -hmm. and planning. I'm also promoting those products. So you can even connect with me to not only know, but also to obtain those. Okay, that's good to know. And how do you think whatever you're promoting are better from whatever we have right now? As I just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, there is no comparison. Okay. Cost-wise, there is no comparison. Benefits in terms of for our health, on us, on the skin, uh, hygiene-wise, and more importantly, environment-wise. Mm -hmm. Because I said 10 years is the life of one yeah. cup which is reused, and it is made of medical-grade silica, so it's 100% biodegradable, compostable. So as against the plastic, there is no comparison at all. That's the reason I'm doing this drive. Yeah, it's good to know, but... Uh, from the observations I've made, the generation now is also leaning towards the biodegradable yes, 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 products. Yes. Mm. Because they are better leader. aware, yes, yeah. they are more aware than yeah. yeah. Srinidhi, do you have any idea how many years a plastic pad remains in the soil? Take a guess. Maybe a hundred years? No. It's around 700 to 800 years. Srinidhi, 800 years is not a joke. 800 years is a lot. Isn't it really shocking? It is. Alarming. Yeah. The day I learned and realized this, it took me time to come out. Mm -hmm. Let me just show you something else. What is this? A plastic toothbrush. And how often do you use your brush? Change your brush. Four or five times a year. Yeah, which means all of us are sending four to five brushes each year into soil. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the damage we are causing to earth, yeah. right? But you have a choice. Mm -hmm. Now, you can replace this with a biodegradable brush, which is made of natural wood. Mm -hmm. Our grandparents used to be sustainable. They used to use neem stick or bubble stick or miswak, mm -hmm. which were biodegradable and also healthy. Mm -hmm. But all the modernity, we are causing damage to earth. And this is something you can change because n number of brushes because yeah. it's biodegradable, yeah. right? So you must switch to wooden. You must switch to wooden. You must switch to wooden. <laughs> brush. I will. I will.
it's been an eye opener for me how many biodegradable products we can actually use so what other sustainable practices are existing and what are you practicing at your home okay in my house as a family we are sustainable tea warriors mm -hmm. okay uh, we live a frugal lifestyle basically simple lifestyle and uh, almost uh, most of the things are organic in the sense let me start with as a woman what are the common things we use for example we have these hard bakes and lysol and domex lysol and domex have not entered my home in last few years okay because uh, it, it very it's very interesting that most of the organic stuff can be used to in other ways mm -hmm. for example i use uh, i make my own multi purpose organic cleaners mm -hmm. using citrus peels and orange peels mm -hmm. similarly you can even use other vegetable peels and fruits peels and all that so this replaces the domex and uh, lysol and all so i can bathroom cleaning floor cleaning like collins spray is replaced by the mm -hmm. bioenzyme laptop screens and tv screen everything is cleaned by this by so when you make your own stuff and when you use organic stuff you feel so connected to earth yeah because it's organic and you are so satisfied that you are doing something and you are cutting down on chemicals mm. so that's a big change yeah. apart from this since mine is an independent house uh with the 500 liter tank we have been managing the water mm -hmm. usage in the house uh, even during summers mm -hmm. uh, though we have a terrace garden and a ground floor garden through water conservation which means in the kitchen most of the water that is vegetables rice everything goes back into the kitchen garden we don't really water the backyard mm. so water conservation and of course power we are conscious of the power we use and most of the products mm. plastic is a no no we always carry our uh, cloth bags in the car and in this on in my cycle mm. up to 2 kilometers or so i normally cycle or walk mm. i consciously avoid cabs and autos it's either walking cycling or public transport that's about it so wherever it is possible try to cut down on and we encourage children also not to waste foods mm -hmm. functions uh, even at home uh, try not to waste wherever it is uh, it will be very uh, you'll be surprised if i tell you that today my daughter has a huge dabba full of chocolate wrapper chips and all that mm -hmm. and even in their bags you'll find but purse also sometimes you find because right from childhood as a value we have instilled this mm -hmm. because my husband i all of us are into it yeah. so when when they get a wrapper it they just are not ready to throw it outside so they bring it home <laughs> so i don't use those garbage bags we don't use those we use just normal dustbin with paper mm -hmm. and it goes back so these are just some in fact there are yeah. many ways it's become an addiction now because every time we go especially plastic bottles every bottle that comes in it goes to be used mm -hmm. either to store by bioenzymes or in the garden You know, so if you go to our terrace we have a jade garden which is my husband's garden mm -hmm. so you will find rubber tires se leke cooler bases which do not have any value at the raddi wala mm -hmm. and bath tubs which are discarded everything see everything that can carry little soil can become a plant mm -hmm. and almost everything that is natural can be reused in some way mm -hmm. so it's a good feeling actually so there are many many ways i think you can we can have a separate yeah. talk yeah. on that yeah it's really good to see how much effort you're putting into making this happen and how in depth knowledge you have about all of this and uh, one thing i wanted to ask was all of this was very intriguing for me to hear because a lot of these i'm hearing for the first time so what do you say how do people connect with you to make this happen at their homes as well oh yeah um we have a instagram i have an instagram uh, account and a facebook page oh. and as i mentioned about the whatsapp group mm -hmm. the link can be yeah. shared i have 200 members so that can be shared any mm -hmm. anybody and everybody is welcome to become a member there's a lot of knowledge sharing that happens in fact let me just share one yesterday's uh, incident as somebody from australia who's a member shared uh, uh, photo uh, drawings made by her 9 year old son 12 year old daughter and mm -hmm. a niece who is also 10 years old mm -hmm. and uh, because i keep sharing a lot of stuff they were inspired by that and mm -hmm. they wrote poems on that with drawings okay so she was very happy so she shared i would like to share it and all that so these are things which really make you feel good mm -hmm. because it's not about how much difference or how much change you can bring in but even if it's an iota of difference you are able to make in yeah. it is in the arabic as you say you know, it's sadaqa zariya mm -hmm. because uh, 
See, when you take any holy book for that matter, I haven't read the Gita so much in depth, but I'm very closely connected to Quran. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot about sustainability in the Quran. There's a lot about waste management. There's a lot about uh, emphasis. There's a lot of emphasis of how mindful you should be about the creations which have been created for you. Yeah. And it's uh, time and again the Creator says that you are the representative of these creations. It is impetus and it is incumbent upon you to take care of them. Mm. So I know we are not creators. We cannot take care of everything. But mm. if you can even the little little things that you can, like for example the brush, if I am yeah. able to cut down on all the plastic which is going, that is also enough. Yeah. And the the main vision or the fundamental thing with which is, I started this was uh, two things. Number one is that this should go into parenting. Mm. Just as in parenting lessons, the green gene, you know, right from childhood, yeah. it should become a part of your dinner talks or mm. school teachers, parents, so that that bonding with nature increases is goes because yeah. I have seen uh, experienced people asking me questions can I just bring the butterfly and put it in my garden these kind of things so I could see a clear disconnect between the education we have had mm. and the true education which is there yeah right so and uh, you see one member who's a butterfly conservationist she shares every day about butterflies in the group mm -hmm. till now she has shared more than 70 75 facts only about butterfly mm -hmm. can you imagine and it is beautiful reading those facts. You learn to appreciate. Yeah. And when a child starts connecting this way through the parent, then they appreciate. Hmm. It's only when you appreciate you start yeah. safeguarding that, right? Yes, yes. I've written articles about sustainability from the perspective of Holy Quran. And then I've written uh, articles in newsletters like Islamic Voice and websites like islamkazikr.com to trying to integrate uh, you know quran with nature so i have written many articles to explore sustainability nature environment as it is mentioned in the holy quran in the various ayats thank you again for being here My okay pleasure. and one last question so when you were talking about dissolving resistance from mm -hmm. parents did you have any resistance from your home? See, it's it's very important to have support within the family when you need to bring about any kind of change, especially when it's a positive change. Yeah. And uh, that is also one reason why I said my motto is to have one sustainability warrior and especially a child in every family because that way it is easy to bring in that change. So, sorry on insisting, but what resistance did you receive from your family? I never had any resistance from my family. Mm -hmm. Because everybody, right from my parents, my siblings, my husband, now my children also, all of us have been passionate about environment and sustainability. So, mm -hmm. I have had no resistance. That's been a big plus point, actually. Thank you so much for this wonderful interview. And uh, thank you, Serenity, for organizing it in a, such a lovely way. And uh, I want to share one thing with you. The plus point that Sahara was referring to, who is that? We are lucky to have him here on the premises at Babula NGO now. I heartily invite Mr. Zawed Zamalji to join us. Thank you so much for making this uh, interview a wonderful thing and I'm so hopeful that this will inspire many, many more people, individuals and families and com communities to go sustainable and uh, as a small token of appreciation uh, from our NGO, we are giving this eco-friendly fans. Thank you. These are all made with bamboo and cloth and there is a small message also and uh, I take one for me. And uh, Srinidhi, can you help with the bag? Oh yeah, that is there. Uh, this bag you have to give to them. And uh, thank you. Yeah, can you check what is there inside? Oh, oh wow. that is. That's can a, you? That's a nice message. It's uh, quotes the Constitution of India, Article Fifty One. Uh, 
it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to protect and improve the natural environment, including forests, lakes, rivers, and wildlife, and to have compassion for living creatures. Wow, wow. I think nice. that's a very yes. nice... So this is a camera hole device that we have brought out to spread awareness about the Indian citizens, every Indian citizen's constitutional obligation, the fundamental duty to protect nature. This hole is there for keeping your mobile here and when the participant of this online challenge reads the text, we record the video and request the participant to post it in their social media account and uh, nominate two or three of their friends to do this. This is the whole thing. So we have this campaign running in 22 Indian languages and we have other ways, creative ways of doing this. So your bag contains uh, a couple of uh, camera hole placards like this. And uh, uh, can you say something, final words to thank them? Oh yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. And uh, I'd very much like to again express my gratitude for you being here. Okay, sure. And I would also like to express my gratitude for all the audience who's seen this and, you know, taken away something or the other from whatever you've spoken. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ganga Darji. Uh, so, everyone who's seen this video and taken away something, please do leave a like and please hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to connect with the gardening team that Sahira has initiated, we will leave all the details in the description. So, please do take out your time and do that as well. Connect with Gardenia and help me connect you to nature. Let's live in and live behind a better world. Uh, so everyone who's seen this video and taken away something, please do leave a like and please hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to connect with the gardening team that Sahira has initiated, we will leave all the details in the description. So please do take out your time and do that as well. Connect with Garden Yard and help me connect you to nature. Are you feeling a little bit humid? Yeah, it's kind of suffocating. have been here for a long time. Well, here at Babel NGO, we have a solution for this.